Gilbert wakes up, he finds himself stuffed into a bucket of water. He was furious. He asks his friend behind him to pull him out. A beautiful woman tries to save him, but as soon as she stepped on the sand, her foot was sucked firmly into the sand. She tried with all her might to pull it out, but it didn't work. Then tried to dig out the sand with her hands, but her hands were sucked in too. Mike wanted to go and help. He rushed out to save her despite his girlfriend's resistance. But before he could get more than a few steps away, he fell to the ground. The funny thing is he couldn't get up himself. The next second, half of his face is swallowed up by the monster in the sand. As Mike continues to sink, Mitch hurriedly threw a life-saving device at him. But it was still too late. And just like that, Mike disappeared into the sand as his friends watched. To find out what was in the sand, Kaylee slowly reached her hand into the sand. The next thing she know, there's a million little tentacles bursting out of the sand. It's obvious that it's this unassuming thing that killed Mike. Luckily, they couldn't get too far off the ground. And that's when Kaylee spots a shell that looks like a broken egg not too far away. Gilbert looks at the shell and remembers that the monster egg was picked up during the beach party last night. If nothing else, the monster under the beach was hatched from this egg. Gilbert panicked at the sight. To stabilize Gilbert, Jonah brought to surfboards. He alternates the boards on the beach. There was an accident. Just as Jonah was about to climb onto the bench, the board suddenly slipped. And when he was hanging between the bench and the board, the monster took the opportunity to extend its tentacles. Luckily, Jonah had practiced his waist and abdominal strength. As the tentacles are about to open up, Jonah threw his buttocks up and jumped straight onto the bench. Unfortunately, the tentacles had already cut through his belly. The pain was so intense that he had to lie flat on his back. It took a long time to regain some strength. There was food and water left on the bench from last night. Jonah has just opened the bag. A banana falls to the sand. He quickly picks it up, only to find that the monster can't reach the place burned. Jonah hesitates and finds the courage to jump into there. Everyone around him is relieved to see he's okay. But before they could rejoice, the wounds caused by the tentacles begin to fester as quickly as the eye could see. Then the pus began to flow and bleed. Finally, he was left to die on the long table. After eating Mike, the monster has grown considerably. He can now puncture a tire with its tentacles. Ronnie and Chana have to evacuate the car. And that's when Gilbert said he had locked everyone's phones in the trunk. Ronnie, with the help of Kaylee and Mitch, with the key, she slowly opened the trunk. But just before she saw the bag with the phones, not far away, a police car appeared with its horn honking. Ronnie, who was highly concentrated, was directly scared to slip. The moment she slipped, her whole palm got caught in the trunk. Ronnie screams in pain. But there was no way they could open the trunk in their current condition. The police drove up to the scene as everyone shouted. Kaylee shouted that there was a monster underneath, reminding him not to get out of the car. The police think they're high and just open the door and get out. The tentacles immediately attacked, but it was blocked by his leather shoes. Mitch saw the scene. The cop told them to get out of the cabin. Of course, Kaylee didn't agree. The police officers was about to use the pepper spray when he accidentally knocked over the keys. He was about to grab the keys, and his hand was nailed to the ground. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't get free. It wasn't long before his entire body was pulled to the ground by the tentacles. Kaylee dared not look again. A few seconds later, there was only a pool of blood on the floor. Knowing that the monster couldn't break through the shoes, Mitch was ready to make a pair of protective shoes and run over to the police car. But just as Chanda was throwing him a towel, he loses his balance and falls straight down. The monster, of course, had to eat him too. Watching Mitch's tragic death, Kaylee got brave. She took the railing off the side of the hut and threw it in front of the car. Then she jumped into the car. The three of them worked together to free Ronnie's hand first. Then they put the railing on the ground, preparing to take the canoe to the police car. Kaylee and Chanda made it across with no problem. But when it was Ronnie's turn, something went wrong. She lost her balance and fell to the ground. Before anyone could react, she was devoured by the monster. The monster that had eaten several people in a row was already very strong. Gilbert's blood on the bucket began to attract tentacles. Chanda wrapped her feet in a towel. Finally, she managed to get on the bonnet of the police car. Gilbert was so excited, but suddenly... Something's moving again! <laughs> as soon as Gilbert spoke, several thick tentacles came out of the bucket and wrapped themselves around him. <laughs> Chanda is grieving. The tentacles start shaking the police car. Chanda falls over and passes out. By the time she woke up, it was 12 in the morning. She found the emergency lifeboat in the police car. When she dropped it on the ground, it popped off instantly. It was just far enough for them to climb into the police car. Of course, the tentacled monster wouldn't let them get away so easily. Kaylee had to jump on the roof of the car in time to get in. Luckily, there was spare petrol in the back of the police car. She sprinkled the gasoline around the car. When the tentacles appear, she lights a match. Burn you motherfucker! As the tentacle monster is set on fire. And that's the end of the story.